Hello everyone, and welcome to this new walking tour in Paris. Thanks for joining me, folks. All right, let's do it. Today is Friday, April 12th, 2024, and we're in the most touristic place in Paris called Montmartre. We're starting this walk at Metro Les Abbes, which is at the bottom of the hill of Montmartre. Are you ready to hike a little bit? Come on, Montmartre ain't Everest. It's more like a friendly staircase disguised as a picturesque Parisian street. All right, let's do it. Okay, that street, Rue des Abbesses, was named after the former Abbesses convent. Did you know that it was once a bustling hub for the Abbesses of the convent of Montmartre? From there, we'll meander through the quiet streets of Rue Ravignon and Place Emile Goudeau, soaking in the village atmosphere. From there, we'll meander through the quiet streets of Rue Ravignon and Place Emile Goudeau, soaking in the village atmosphere. From there, we'll meander through the quiet streets of Rue Ravignon and Place Emile Goudeau, soaking in the village atmosphere. Did you know that Rue Ravignon used to be a major vineyard route? Back in the day, carts laden with grapes would rumble down this very street, supplying the local winemakers. So next time you sip a glass of Parisian wine, remember, it might have a connection to this very street. Place Emile Goudeau, originally known as Place Ravignon after a nearby abbey, the square underwent a name change in 1906. It was rechristened Place Emile Goudeau, a fitting tribute to a key figure in the artistic awakening of Montmartre, Emile Goudeau himself. By the way, Emile Goudeau was a multifaceted figure in Paris. He played a significant role in the artistic awakening of Montmartre during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. A fountain graces the center of the square, offering a refreshing respite on a warm Parisian day. Keep an eye out for the charming wrought iron lamp posts.
Rue d'Auchamp. This narrow street was once home to many vineyards and orchards, giving Montmartre its nickname La Butte Montmartre, the Montmartre Hill. Today, it's a quieter, more residential area, offering a glimpse into the neighborhood's past. This place also played a role in the Paris Commune. In 1871, during the uprising, the rebels of Montmartre set up cannons on Rue d'Auchamp, firing against the government forces. The street still bears the scars of this tumultuous period. Welcome to Le Moulin de la Galette. It's a popular tourist destination known for its traditional French cuisine and charming atmosphere. Actually, it used to be a windmill once used to grind wheat, became a popular subject for artists like Renoir and Van Gogh. In the late 19th century, it was transformed into a dance hall, attracting artists, bohemians, and locals alike. Cuisine maison et produits frais. That means homemade cuisine with fresh ingredients. La Place Marcel Aimé. What a charming little square nestled in the heart of Montmartre. While it may not boast centuries of history, it pays homage to a beloved writer who captured the essence of Parisian life in his works, Marcel Aimé himself. This peculiar figure is none other than the protagonist of Aimé's short story, Le Passe Muraille, The Wall Passer. The story follows Dutilleul, a timid man who discovers he has the uncanny ability to walk through walls. His newfound power throws his life into chaos, leading to both hilarious and thought-provoking situations. Rue Girardon. Way back in the 14th century, Rue Girardon wasn't lined with trendy cafes, but something far more essential. Watering holes. Yes, back then, Montmartre was a village, and access to fresh water was paramount. Imagine horses and carts stopping by Rue Girardon to quench their thirst at the communal well. On my left, it's Square Suzanne Buisson. It's a charming little park. It's the perfect spot to relax on a park bench with a good book, unwind after exploring Montmartre, or play La Pétanque with friends.
We arrived at Place de Lida, a charming corner of Montmartre dedicated to the legendary French singer, De Lida. Born Yolanda Gigliotti in Egypt, she immigrated to France with her family and eventually settled in Montmartre, a stone's throw away from Place de Lida. De Lida's career skyrocketed in the 1950s and 60s with iconic hits like Bambino and Jatendrai. She became a household name, captivating audiences with her powerful voice, glamorous persona, and dramatic flair. Tragically, Delita took her own life in 1987. Nearly a decade later, in 1996, the Parisian City Council decided to pay homage to their beloved songstress by renaming a small square near her former residence, Place Delita. It was a gesture of affection and a way to ensure her legacy lived on in the heart of Montmartre. Welcome to Rue de l'Abreuvoir. The street offers a captivating view of the iconic Sacré-Cœur Basilica perched atop Montmartre. This makes it actually a popular spot for photographers and anyone seeking a picturesque Parisian scene. La Maison Rose, this vibrant pink house was once a popular hangout for artists, including Toulouse-Lautrec, who immortalized it in his paintings. It later became a cabaret and a restaurant, attracting a bohemian crowd. La Maison Rose was known for its lively atmosphere and its eccentric clientele. Artists would gather to discuss art, politics, and life, often spilling out onto the terrace to debate and philosophize under the Parisian sky, La Maison Rose has been revitalized as a successful restaurant. It offers French cuisine with a focus on fresh, seasonal ingredients, allowing you to experience delicious food in a historically significant setting. Rue Corteau. Rumor has it that a group of impressionist painters known for their love of open-air painting once staged an impromptu picnic right here on Rue Corteau. Picture Renoir, Monet and their contemporaries spreading out their canvases and capturing the Parisian skyline in all its glory, fueled by baguettes and laughter. What you see in the background is Le Chateau d'Eau de Montmartre, the Montmartre water tower.
Here is the water tower of Montmartre. This iconic water tower stands tall as a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of Parisian infrastructure. Its towering presence, reaching an impressive height of 43 meters, has been a familiar sight for Montmartre residents for nearly a century. Now we walk on Rue des Saules. That's leading us to that famous place called Au Lapin Agile. By the way, the Montmartre vineyards on my right, folks. Believe it or not, wine production in Montmartre dates back to the Gallo-Roman era. Imagine sprawling vineyards blanketing the slopes of Montmartre, their bounty sustaining the local population. Voici le Lapin Agile. Le Lapin Agile, the Agile Rabbit in Montmartre, is a historic cabaret steeped in artistic legacy and bohemian charm. It's more than just a bar, it's a living piece of Parisian history that continues to attract artists, locals, and tourists alike. Founded in the late 19th century, Le Lapin Agile became a haven for artists and revolutionaries during the early 20th century. Famous names like Picasso, Modigliani, and Utrillo frequented the establishment, fostering a vibrant creative atmosphere. The iconic red facade of Le Lapin Agile, adorned with a whimsical rabbit illustration by André Gilles, became a symbol of the artistic spirit of Montmartre. Voilà les vignes de Montmartre. This is a charming 1,500 square meter vineyard boasting over 1,700 grapevines. Gamay and Pinot Noir, grapes reign supreme producing a light red and rosé wine every year during the harvest festival, the Fête des Vendanges. Le Consulat is a historic brasserie, French-style restaurant, steeped in Parisian charm and artistic legacy. Voilà la rue Norvin. Come on. 
Yo tenía mucho de voz. Solo que era usted. Claro, pero es muy guapo y tenía muy buena voz. We just arrived at the crown jewel of Montmartre, the Place du Tertre. This bustling square is where artists showcase their work, creating a vibrant open-air gallery. Feel free to browse, chat with the artists, or even commission a portrait to take a piece of Montmartre magic home with you. How much is a portrait drawing here? Any ideas? It can vary depending on several factors, but here's a general idea. Expect prices to fall somewhere between 25 and 120, approximately $2,730 US. More established artists with a strong reputation will generally charge more. And obviously, a larger or more detailed portrait will naturally cost more. Take a stroll around the square and get a sense of the going rates for similar portraits.
Et le grand finale, le Sacré-Cœur. This iconic basilica, perched atop the hill of Montmartre, is one of the most recognizable landmarks in Paris. It was built in the late 19th century to commemorate the martyrs of the Paris Commune. Construction began in 1875, but the story behind it starts much earlier, during the tumultuous Franco-Prussian War and the bloody Paris Commune uprising of 1871. The city was left deeply scarred, both physically and emotionally. The French people, yearning for peace and spiritual renewal, decided to build a grand basilica on the highest point of Paris, Montmartre, as a symbolic gesture of atonement and dedication to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Sacré-Cœur. The view from the Sacré-Cœur Basilica is undeniably stunning. Paris unfolds like a breathtaking tapestry, rooftops sprawl in all directions dotted with iconic landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, currently under reconstruction, and the Pantheon. It's a truly impressive vista. likely to see talented street performers showcasing their skills in front of the Sacre Coeur. This could include musicians, singers, magicians, jugglers, and even caricature artists. These performers add a lively atmosphere to the square and provide entertainment for visitors.
Here is the Montmartre funicular station. Let's walk down the 222 steps of this staircase. The funicular operates with two funicular cars that travel up and down the incline simultaneously. The journey offers glimpses of the surrounding vineyards and the charming streets of Montmartre. A ticket is required to ride the funicular, and it's typically integrated into the Paris Visite Travel Pass or similar transportation passes. The entrance to the funicular is located at the base of the hill near the Abyssus metro station. A ticket is required to ride the funicular, and it's typically integrated into the Paris Visite Travel Pass or similar transportation passes. The entrance to the funicular is located at the base of the hill near the Abyssus metro station. A ticket is required to ride the funicular, and it's typically integrated into the Paris Visite Travel Pass or similar transportation passes. The entrance to the funicular is located at the base of the hill near the Abyssus metro station. All right, thank you folks. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed Montmartre. See you guys. Stay tuned.